when we will see the SN15 rollout. What's inside Starship? How SN15 differ from SN11? Is this a new Starship prototype? I'll answer this and many other questions in the next episode of Starship Updates. We'll start off with additional info that emerged regarding our poor SN11, which probably ended her life in a massive fireball. Mauricio from RGV Aerial Photography shared publicly more photos showing the landing site. As I said in the previous episode, there is virtually no damage to the landing pad and to the ground support equipment farm. What's interesting is that one piece of Starship left over landed a whopping 817 meters far from the landing pad. Unfortunately, we still don't know what happened to SpaceX's robodog called Zeus. Hopefully, he's alive and well. Eric Space and Nick Henning created two animations that show us how could the landing look if there wasn't a fake fog. Also, Elon himself gave us a bit more info regarding the SN11 mishap. As stated in his tweet, the ascent phase, belly flop maneuver and the controlled freefall all went pretty well. Though photographer Trevor Malman says that in his opinion during the belly flop maneuver, Starship tipped a bit too far. But back to Elon's tweet. Looks like a small methane leak started a fire on Raptor serial number 52. It probably was the onboard fire that we were able to see during the ascent phase. It damaged the avionic system, which caused a hard start of Raptor methane turbo pump. A hard start in rocketry means that there was too much pressure during engine ignition, which in the worst case scenario can cause the engine to explode, and probably this is what happened during the SN11 landing phase. Musk ended his tweet with this is getting fixed six ways to Sunday, which basically means that they will try their best so this situation won't happen again. Rest in peace SN11, but now let's take a look at what interesting things happened regarding the prototype with serial number 15. Recently, Elon tweeted that the SN15 will be on the pad in a few days, but we weren't expecting that he meant literally a few days. The day after the SN11 launch, a new generation prototype was transported from the mid bay to the high bay, where later the nose cone section was stacked on top of the tank section. This means that this starship is ready for a rollout to the suborbital test stand. Ok, ok, I'm always saying new generation this, new generation that, but how exactly SN15 differ from SN11? Well, in quite a lot of things actually. Elon said in one of his tweets that SN15 will have hundreds of software and hardware changes, but from the things that we can see, there is a handful of changes. Firstly, there is a new thrust pack with a simplified plumbing, because as we know, the best part is no part. Secondly, there are the new Raptors themselves. They don't have a thrust vector control system attached to them, which probably means that the TVC will mount on the thrust pack section itself. Other than that, the welds got way cleaner, the cable management now looks really tidy, and of course, of course, the nose cone itself is a bit pointier. What's interesting is that we won't start off the new generation tests with mounted raptors. To understand this choice, we need to go back in time quite a bit. Back in SN8 times, there was this thing called Trust Simulator. It's basically a hydraulic press that simulates the pressure on the thrust pack similar to that during the real static fire or flight. As we can see on the suborbital test pad A, such a device was just mounted, which means that SN15 will first conduct pressure test with a thrust simulator and then, if everything goes according to the plan, it will have Raptor engines mounted for the further testing. According to Boca Chica road closures, the SN15 could roll out to the pad as early as April 8th and the test campaign could begin on April 9th. Speaking of Raptor engines, it looks like the SpaceX test facility in McGregor got a significant upgrade. A few new Raptor test stands were built for both sea level and vacuum Raptors. Also, it appears that now SpaceX can test those engines in both horizontal and vertical positions, which hopefully will help develop a reliable and reusable Raptor engine. Now, let's take a look at the progress regarding the Super Heavy booster. We need to remember that without them, an orbital flight won't be possible. As we know, booster number one will unfortunately be scrapped 
even before it will conduct any tests. Here we have an interesting photo that appeared on Grimes' Instagram. We can see here a beautiful and absolutely stunning Elon's passion that he could sacrifice his life for. Of course, I'm talking about the 304L steel from which booster number 1 was made. Unfortunately, some women make it impossible to see the BN1 trust pack. As we expected, the first operational super heavy prototype will be equipped with landing legs. It will probably take quite some time for Elon's team to come up with a booster catching mechanism. Mary, the Boca Chica girl, snapped an exciting photo. This is probably the aft section of booster number 2, but what's more important is that it looks like it will have great fins, landing legs and it will not have the skirt that protects the raptors from its side. Eric Space created a 3D render that shows how could the BN2 look in real life. Of course, it could be just an imagination from SpaceX graphic designers, but who knows. Other than that, a new super heavy truss bag was spotted. It will be probably used for BN2, but what's more interesting is that it has mounts for the 8 inner Raptor engines. Before we continue, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you won't miss out on any episodes of the Starship updates. Your support really helps me create more videos for you. Also, I have a Twitter account where I retweet a lot of things regarding Starship prototypes. You can find the link in the description or by searching for Adraketomania on Twitter. Back to the video. Speaking of orbital launchpad, we were hoping that on April the 5th we will see a road closure that would allow for the SN15 rollout. Even the Tankzilla itself was transported to the test facility, but it turned out that on that day SpaceX had a different target. We did see a rollout but for Starship SN5. Oh no wait, let's go back. We did see a rollout but for GSE tank number 1. It looks a lot like a Starship without the nose cone, but it's not quite the same. This tank task will be to store large amounts of fuel needed to fill up the Starship. In this case, it appears that the GSE-1 will be used for liquid oxygen. We expect another 6 similar tanks to be rolled out in the near future. It's cheaper for them to build the tanks themselves with Starship parts than to buy an off-the-shelf one. This really shows how cheap the Starship rocket will be. From other news, we have the next phase of our blonde nose cone mystery. Now, it looks like it combined with the mystery of the white weird construction stand. In the last episode, I predicted that this headerless tank will become a lunar starship mock-up. Now, this nose cone was mounted on this weird stand. As I said earlier, I'm really confident that this isn't a super heavy test stand. In my opinion, it's still a lunar mock-up, but you might be able to go inside the nose cone. Though, I'm not sure what is the purpose of those two white pieces mounted in the place of the forward flaps. I've heard theories that it might be a flaps test stand or maybe an aerodynamic load simulator, but I don't think so. I guess that we just need to wait and see what will happen next with this mystery structure. Twitter user Neopark created a phenomenal poster showing off Starship Insights. It allows us to better understand where is every important Starship part. Here we have two ball-shaped tanks, often referred to as header tanks. Their task is to hold the fuel for the Starship landing maneuver. Next up, we have two downcomer pipes. They connect the header tanks with the truss pack section. Then we have the methane and liquid oxygen tanks themselves. RCS thrusters are used for Starship maneuvers when the atmosphere is too thin to create the drag. Next, we have forward and aft flaps. These two white boxes are the explosives that allow the prototype to be blown up in case something goes terribly wrong. Then we have the COPV tanks that hold the different gases. Next, there is the Starship skirt that is a part of the aft section. Then we have the command dome, which is a barrier between methane and liquid oxygen tank. The forward dome ends the CH4 tank and it also has the batteries and the onboard computer. Finally, we have the cargo bay with a human for scale. To get the full quality poster, don't forget to check out New Pork's Twitter. To finish off this episode, let's take a quick look at Brendan's weekly Starship progress update. Lately, he was experimenting with the color palette, so be ready for some bright flashes. Compared to the previous week, we can see that the SN15 was fully assembled. Next, BN2 received its trust pack and there appeared a few parts for BN3, mainly a forward tank section and a command dome connecting the two tanks together. That's all I've got for you today. If you liked this video, then don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. Also, share this video with all of your friends and I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.